Hello and welcome to this Mine Factory Reloaded mod tutorial. In this video I will go through how you do mob and animal farming with Mine Factory Reloaded blocks. I will go through 10 different blocks or machines and uh, how they work and how you use them. Worth noting is that all of these machines or most of the machines require power and it has to be industrial craft or build craft power so beneath all that require power i have placed one of these energy cells that will take off to cover the power so that's why you are not seeing any power lines connecting everything okay let's get started the first one we will look at is the breeder. This is what you use to make your animals breed. It works on all the vanilla cattle, they like cows and pigs and such. And as long as you keep the appropriate food in the inventory in the breeder, it will automatically feed the all the animals in a five times five square in front of it. Let me demonstrate with spawning two cows and two pigs. At the same time, we can look on the other side. Oops. We can take a look at the chronotyper. The chronotyper is what we use to move animals. So if I respawn the cows, and the pigs they will breed and babies will pop up the chronotyper will move the babies or the adults as i had the, the setting before and that that makes sure that the babies grow up in a, a different area than the parents in this area they can grow get bigger and when they are big enough we can use the grinder to finish them off. The grinder will automatically kill all mobs in front of it. It works with both animals and, uh, and enemies, but it will only grind adult animals. So these are safe until they are fully grown. The grinder will output mob essence. It will end up in this tank area and then it is sucked out to this tank and of course the mob drops that ends up in the chest. Another way to take care of mob drops and also to milk the cows is to use this rancher. The rancher will output milk when, when there are cows in front of it. As you can see here, the tank is filled up. And if I have sheep, for example, they will be shared. So as soon as the timer, and there you can see they are shared and they bred and the baby popped up and it will be moved as soon as the 10 second timer are, is finished. So that's the basic farm, breeder, chronotyper, and a grinder. But there are other things we can do as well. This setup is identical to begin with. We move babies in the first chronotyper, and here is another chronotyper that moves adults. This means that we get a sort of in-between area between the breeding place and the slaughter place and this makes it easier for us to use the veterinary station here we can pop in syringes of different kinds for example the growth growth syringe it will of course make a baby grow to full size and it will be moved with the other chronotyper so this will speed up the process 
a huge amount. There are different types of syringes as we can see here. This one, the health will heal them of course and the growth is what I use there. The zombie syringe is also for growing and but there might be side effects. Let's see if... Yeah, it got moved there as well, I just missed it. And finally, there are slime and beginning syringe and a de-zombification syringe. And this one is used on villagers that have been turned into zombies. But in this setup, I am not using the grinder as I did over there. Here I have placed the slaughterhouse. It works in a similar way, but instead of mob essence, it will produce or it will output liquid meat as I pull over here and pink slime that ends up in this tank. To take care of those liquids, I have placed meat packers on both sides. When packing meat from the liquid meat, the, uh, the outcome is a raw meat ingot. You cook this in a furnace and you get food for eating. When taking care of the pink slime, the meat packer will produce, oops, will produce meat nuggets. You can combine these to form a, a meat ingot and or cook it and it will just be nuggets. The pink slime from the tank can also be used in a different way. Pour it on the ground and it will spawn a pink slime. Killing this will of course give, have, give you pink slime instead of the normal green one. Moving on over here, I have placed a sewer. This one does not require energy, as you can see, but it does require an upgrade. Normally, the sewer only works in a one times one square above it, and that's why I have placed it down here, so it's on the same level as the ground that all the mobs or the animals are standing on. And it will suck up sewage from the from the mobs and there it is sucked into this tank and output to this side the sewage can, can be taken care of in the composter and in the composter with the same interface as the other ones it will produce industrial fertilizer and this is used for example to fertilize your farms tree farms or crop farms. On the In the other tank we have mob essence, the same thing as we got from the grinder over there, but this mob essence is produced from all the experience orbs. As you might know we get experience when we breed animals. And those experience orbs are sucked up by the sewer. But you have to make sure that you use a big enough upgrade. In this example I'm using the diamond that will increase the radius by 9. So it will cover all these areas. But not over here. So you can see the experience orbs are still on the ground over here. But in this place they are sucked up. By the sewage or the sewer and placed in a tank so over here i have a tank filled with this mob essence and been connected to it i have the auto spawner this is another way to spawn new mobs uh, or enemies or or cattle but you do it in a different way you have to use a safari net and it has to be the reusable safari net. So you, for example, I can get a new one here. 
if I spawn a cow and I and I catch it with my safari net. And I walk down to the auto spawner and I place the cow. We can see the timer starts to run and when it is finished it will spawn a cow. Or so I thought. There it is. But how fun is that when we can breed it? So instead let me use this safari net where I've captured a villager. And the option to spawn an exact copy, yes or no, should be used according to what you what you want. In this case we get different villages every time. And if I spawn a copy, of course, it will look exactly like the one that I captured. The guy over there. This is also important when you are trying to spawn wither skeletons then you have to use the exact copy from a captured wither skelly otherwise you will end up with both normal skeletons and wither skellies the final contraption i have here is a grinder a mob or a an auto spawner and some power and mob essence so let me take my safarnet, which I have prepared with, in this case, a blaze. And I also have a slime one. And here you can see the blaze getting spawned. There it comes. And the grinder will grind them down and you get the blaze rods as an output from the grinder. Or you can use a slime and here we could have placed a uh, veterinary station and in the veterinary, veterinary station I could have placed a slime and beginning syringe and that would have spawned or it would have grown the slime to a maximum sized one. However, the grinder will kill it in one hit, regardless of the size. So, that's everything I plan to go through in this video or this mod tutorial. If you have any questions about these blocks or if anything was unclear, just feel free to ask and leave a comment. And. I hope to see you in the next video.